everyone. <laughs> Look, different setting, different person. Welcome to another week of Facebook's Hit Subscribe Live. Hit Subscribe Facebook Live. <laughs> With Amanda and Angela. With Amanda and Angela. Okay, so I'm Amanda, you know me. This is Angela. She's our Director of Finance and Operations. And today we're going to talk about WordPress. Um, so if you know anything about me, you know my background is editorial. There's no tech in there whatsoever. Um, Angela, do you have any tech in your background that I don't know about? No. <laughs> um, so both of us are people who are just kind of like, um, you know, working our way through this world. Um, and we're kind of assuming that if you're watching this and you want to know the basics about WordPress and how to set up a blog, that you're probably in the same boat and maybe a little intimidated. And I will say, so my husband Eric, who if you watch our um, you watch our lives before, you know his background is tech. Uh, he he's the person that has done all the software things. You know he's been a CIO. He's deeply technical. He's got a master's in computer science. But the person who built our hit subscribe. Hold on a second. Oh, Amanda and Angela are live over Facebook. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, so, uh, what am I saying? So, the person who built the Hit Subscribe website is not the technical one among us. It was me. I built our website. So, uh, that means you can do it. <laughs> I, th I would say the major takeaway from here is that if you are Google happy and you know you are good at kind of just like Googling things and finding the answers and executing the things that you find on the internet, you're going to be just fine. That's the overarching message here. But we're going to go over a couple of specifics here. Um, and I'm going to start uh, at kind of like, you know, um, the very basic thing. So uh, let's say that you have a business that you're starting. You've registered your LLC. You've maybe not done that and you just want to launch a website for something. There are three things that you're going to need. And number one is a domain name. So for us, that is www.hitsubscribe.com. Uh, so you'll need to find that. You'll need to find one that isn't taken. And uh, I will tell you right now that I have a lot of other dreams for what to call hit subscribe, but everything is taken. <laughs> but you know, people seem to like the name. But actually, I gotta tell you, I'm not I'm not like a huge fan of the name hit subscribe. But you grow to love it; it, it becomes a part of you. <laughs> so don't agonize over what to call it. Just buy something. Just ship it. Just get it done. Um, the places you can go to buy a domain name are stuff like I think you can do it on GoDaddy. Um, I think there's a site called Name Cheap that you can go to, and it is indeed cheap. You can go to domain.com, and all you do is type in the website that you're thinking about calling it and run a search, and it'll be like, this is available, or it's not available. And if it's available, it'll give you a price, and you'll just buy it, and then that, that site is yours Like um, once you build it. And now we're going to talk about building it. But before you build it, with WordPress, because that's kind of what we're talking about here. The thing too that you need is hosting. Um, so hosting, um, as a non-techie, I'm not sure I'm gonna get this 100% right, but the way I think about it is like, all, all of your pages that are gonna be on your website, so you know if you go to a website and you see there's an about page, and we have like the team page, and we have a pricing page, all those pages, um, they need somewhere to live, like they have to live on a server. So you have to buy um, from a company a place to have your web pages live, and that's your hosting company. Um, we use SiteGround. There are other ones you can use. There are ones that you shouldn't use, but I'm not going to badmouth them here. Um, we like SiteGround. It's pretty cool. It's uh, the interface is a little bit unintuitive, but again, you got an itchy Google finger, you're going to figure you're going to figure it out. Um, and from there, once you buy hosting, you'll have an email address. So like, for instance, all of a sudden, when I registered hitsubscribe.com, you could um, write Amanda at hitsubscribe.com, or wait, Amanda at hitsubscribe, yeah, dot com. Yeah. And that email would come to me. Uh, so, you know, you get email addresses uh, labeled to you. So it's cool. Once you got hosting, you're in good shape to actually build your site. And that's the thing three you need is the software that you're going to use to actually create the site and the material on it and the way it's going to look to the public. And that's going to be WordPress uh, because it should be WordPress. I don't know, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's, uh, what do we want to talk about next? We're talking about different uses for WordPress. So um, 
This is something I didn't know. Oh, As yeah. I, we were preparing for this meeting. Amanda was like, well, like, you know, you could use the WordPress for all of this. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's because so many people, like, back when there was, like, Blogger and what, and Blogger and WordPress were kind of, like, the two engines that, you know, if you're like, oh, well, I should start a blog because I like to write and I want a journal and I want the world to read my journal. That was kind of, like, the thing you'd do. You'd be like, well, I'm going to start a WordPress blog or I'm going to start a Blogger blog. Um, that is WordPress. Dot com. There's a difference between WordPress.com. I hope I'm getting this right. I think I'm getting this right. WordPress.com and WordPress.org. WordPress.com. I have a WordPress.com blog, and it's a place where I go and I just share my thoughts about literature. Well, if you're me from like two years ago, that's what I do. I haven't posted there forever. <laughs> but um, WordPress.com, um, remember how I talked about getting hosting? When you do a WordPress.com uh, blog, WordPress is just your host. Like, that's fine. But you don't own the site. Um, I think I'm, I'm thinking, again, I'm not a techie, so this is coming, uh, this is coming from my non-technical, non-vetted experience. WordPress.org, um, allows you to own the site and get a whole full-fledged website. So when you think about WordPress, you might think like, well, that's blogs, um, but it doesn't have to be. Um, for instance, if you go visit hitsubscribe.com, you'll see a website, you'll see a homepage, you'll see an about page, or you'll see a team page, and then um, you know, you'll see our plans and stuff like that. All of that is hosted on, on WordPress, and we do have a blog there, but we don't have to. Like, if you just want to have your website on WordPress, a-okay. If you want a um, e-commerce site, if you want, um, you, can, you can use Shopify and set up a whole store on WordPress, you can do that too. Um, you can have this is what we have. We have, um, you know, all that normal website stuff, and then we have a blog as well um, as like part of the site. But really, WordPress is is like the website, and then the blog is just a little part of that. Um, also, if you wanted um, to just have it be a blog, you could also do that. Like um, Eric, who's normally the person sitting next to me, um, his site Dead Tech is mainly just there to host his blog, but he's got a WordPress site um, that he owns that isn't just a wordpress.com blog um, so he can customize it as he fit. Here's the other difference if you just have a blog you kind of write and you can sort of you could sort of customize the theme or whatever but we're about to talk about plugins and stuff like that and you need a site um, in order to do that. So this might be a little confusing but um, WordPress.org is the thing that you want to go to. WordPress.org is the one where you're going to act build an actual website and not just a blog. Um, okay, what are we going to talk about next? Websites in general. Uh, oh, I think we were going to talk about like the weird way in which we use <laughs> our WordPress instance. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, we use it to host our blog and our website. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our actual hit subscribe stuff, which mm -hmm. you should check out. Yeah, go do that. Um, but we also actually use it to work. Um, right. We use it to create content for our clients. Um, so it, it's kind of weird, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Maybe other people do this. I don't know a lot about the space. But uh, so I guess the main thing that we use Hit Subscribe's WordPress for, apart from it being our WordPress and our website and blog, is we use it to compose. Uh, blog posts and other content for our clients um, and so people might wonder why we do that instead of perhaps um, composing in Word or Google Docs or even on our, uh, our even on our clients uh, instance of WordPress mm -hmm. um, so there's a few reasons um, you know we find it to be good for our workflow mm -hmm. so one of them is that like it's a, a hub for like all the people that we have to work with it that right. work for us. So we can invite or disinvite people <laughs> as we see fit. Yeah. We can assign permissions to people, mm -hmm. um, you know, willy nilly. Yes. And, you know, we don't need anyone else's mm -hmm. permission to do that. So um, that makes it pretty easy for us to add people or remove people mm -hmm. when we're adding a lot of people lately. Um, yeah, I think we have like a hundred users. I think we're right I think now. we're on like ninety six maybe. Oh yeah. So that's we're, right. we're yeah, really yeah. close <laughs> to that milestone. We come right for us. Help us at hundred. Perhaps we should celebrate that. <laughs> Four more people 
check out our website to apply <laughs> to be an author. <laughs> um, so, okay, another reason uh, that we use it is we have uh, plugins that we like to use, which we'll talk yeah. about a little bit more, but, yeah. um, you know, our clients may or may not have these plugins, and Word doesn't have these plugins, and Google Docs doesn't have these plugins, as far as I'm aware that but we use that they're like very integral to our workflow right and how we um can gauge like the quality of the content that we're creating for clients um well said yeah the other uh thing is uh wordpress is a industry standard and yeah blogs and websites yes but mostly i guess i don't know do you think blogs and websites are mostly blogs i don't know i think a lot of other people might use different things like squarespace is an option for e-commerce um yeah or like you know various things i think there's if you want to host a website you know there are other choices but i think if you're going to have a blog um especially there's just no one who's doing it like wordpress i mean they just um They've been doing it for so long and they've, they've thought of everything for sure and the plugin <laughs> ecosystem is so rich that um i, I just uh so all of our clients use wordpress yeah currently. that's it so since all of our clients use wordpress mm -hmm. we can get a very nice preview of what the content that we're creating for them yeah. is going to look like in wordpress and they might have like different themes or yeah. fonts or whatever but we can at least see that, you know, the, the formatting that we are uh, structuring, you know, bullet points and pull quotes and all that is going to look good uh, to them because it looks good on our site. Right. Hey, um, shout out to Phil. Hey. Oh, yeah. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> we got people watching live. This is exciting. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Um, what else? Uh, so uh, a really nice thing about um, WordPress is that we like have access to everything we've ever created. That's yeah. That's the other um, thing. It's like a major source of like all blog posts we've ever. Yeah, written. and I don't actually know if. If there's a limit, is there like a like a storage limit? Well, we're gonna find out we're, the hard way. We might find out. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like if you're on Google Docs, you know, you got a limit unless you're like a business and you're paying for it. You've got a limit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't. I don't know if you really want to like, I guess, use your OneDrive for Word or something. But oh. anyway, it's a very nice. Well organized, easy to sort. You can sort by author, you can sort by mm -hmm. client, or whatever tags you want to put yeah. in. So if we want to look up whatever we wrote two years ago for one of our clients, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to find. Refreshes too; it makes it really easy. Oh, that's a good to point. Do. Um, so we do something called blog post refreshes, which is where we go in and we update it to be um, like kind of cutting edge things. So like if we wrote something that was like best programming languages in 2018, it's 2019, let's go update that for, for the SF, SEO of it. So we can go back there and just have the author go in and update it. You know, we've got, we've got it right there. So it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we can also like store photos, uh, images, graphics, whatever. I don't know if there's a limit. Man, I wonder if we're gonna hit our limit someday. And then what are we gonna do? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Terrifying. Um, so let's see, why else do we use, um, okay, one of the reasons that we, I guess one of the things we use WordPress for that we're not perhaps thrilled with is uh, editing. Ugh. Um, so we have a process <laughs> where we kind of, you know, an author will write a post and then an, a professional editor will go and look at it and suggest changes mm -hmm. and it's going through this whole process and the back and forth in that in WordPress is not uh, the best. It's not like Google Docs where you can leave a comment and somebody can say, oh, I'm going to change this and it's resolved. Yeah. And I'm sure uh, even side-by-side -side comparisons on Word are, are better. So yeah. shout out to WordPress if you're listening. <laughs> Please <laughs> help. Could, it would be cool. Please help. Or if some <laughs> wonderful developer out there could create a plugin, just like hit up Amanda. She'll tell you exactly what she yes. wants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> plugin. Um, but I mean, so we do use it for that and it works and you know, like we're, we're, we're getting through it. And, yeah. And like, but... I, I mean, it's okay. Like you go, so when you go in and you make changes to, um, so, uh, I guess the thing that I would say is, um, if, um, we have a, um, you'll have to, you'll have to have a theme and I'm not sure how the theme will work for you. Um, in our theme, you can't really see changes over revisions, but like if what you're doing in WordPress is putting text in there and hitting save, 
Um, if you come in and you make some changes to that and you hit save, you can browse the revisions and do something where you can have a side-by-side -side look and it will highlight all the changes so you can inspect. And so we use this for editorial. When somebody composes a draft in, our, in the blog section, you know, where it says add new blog post, they'll come and compose a draft and then an editor can come in and they can actually go in and, chain, and make the changes. And normally in Word, you have to turn on track changes or whatever, but you can just go in and make all the changes live. And when the author wants to go review those changes, all they have to do is hit Browse Revisions and compare side by side, and you'll see everything that the editor did all highlighted over on the right. So yeah. it's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty cool when it works. Yeah. Which is sometimes. You can compare any revision <laughs> to any other revision. It's yeah. pretty great, yeah. but it has its faults. Yes. And so I should mention that if you're going to use it for this niche weird thing that we're using it for, which you're probably never going to use it for, <laughs> buyer beware or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But there, there's, that, that is to say, too, like, if you, um, you can, with WordPress, for the most part, you're never going to do anything terrifying that you can't then undo. Um, so either you can revert back to a previous version. Um, if you go, and we're going to talk about plugins uh, for a second, and we should we should probably hustle along through this. Um, All right, okay. But um, you can install a plugin, too, that will do automatic backups of your site, too. And so, like, if you're like, all right, uh, I'm going to press the big red button and blow it all up, you can, you can go get a previous version of your entire site. Not just, like, a previous version of a blog post, but, like, you know, you'll never do anything in WordPress where you have made it so you you're done like you destroyed your website unless you go into the php files let me tell you don't go into the php files if you're not technical the final word that's that's what i have to say all right so <laughs> we got some plugins that we use regularly the most important oh, yeah. one is yoast <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> this is my integral to a lot of what we do and a lot of like quality assurances mm -hmm. that we promise to our clients so we promise uh, what we call green re readability, mm -hmm. and so Yoast has a stoplight colors thing mm -hmm. where it's red if it's not good, and yellow if you're almost there, and then green if everything's awesome. Yeah. So we, um, you know, we require that our authors turn in posts that are green for readability. So that means that like they don't have a lot of passive voice, like the mm -hmm. sentence uh, length is pretty decent, not too long. Yep. Um, the the flesh flesh. Reading? Oh, the flesh reading the score. Flesh reading the scale. grossest reading test of all time. Kind of weird to say. <laughs> the flesh. <laughs> um, it, you know, it passes that test mm -hmm. for, uh, I can't remember what grade level or what reading level. but oh, I'm uh, not sure, yeah. Like a basic reading level because mm -hmm. we don't want it to be too uh, intense or academic. Um, mm -hmm. So it does all these grades. It, um, you know, it's like an algorithm that grades your, your work mm -hmm. and it'll spit out the colors and, mm -hmm. you know, it'll give you suggestions on what you should do better. Um, and the same thing with Yoast for um, uh, SEO. Mm -hmm. So our search engine optimization is one of the things, depending on uh, what tier you are of client that we promise, you know, you know, we'll get, we'll target this keyword and hopefully, you know, you'll rank real high and everybody will be happy. But um, so, you know, if you plug in the keyword, it's going to give you tips on how to make that rank better, whether it's like tweaking the slug, the right. URL, or, right. you know, making your meta different, adding some internal links or external links, um, or, you know, putting more headings in there with your keyword, whatever. But it's a really nice and like very straightforward guide yeah. to helping you boost readability and SEO. Um, yeah. So if you're a beginner, um, if you install Yoast, all of a sudden you will be writing posts that are optimized for SEO, even yeah. if you have no idea how to do that. Right. Like, all just, you have to do is follow their instructions. It just uh, helps you do it. It's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. If, if you and it has like little guides on on how to. If you click on things in there, it'll take you to their web page and it'll explain things to you. So you know already if you're using this free tool that comes with WordPress, then you probably are doing better than a lot of people out there who yeah. aren't utilizing it. So, yep. Yep. Or That's using it. True. I hate utilized. Yeah, That's all right. right. <laughs> I'm going to forgive you for that one. <laughs> um, and we have one last, th one last plug-in to recommend and, uh, well, to recommend with reservations. <laughs> yeah. Um, the company is Aspos, right? Yeah. And it's export to file, which is nice when it works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's great because it just exports your whole post to a Word file, spits it out, and it it preserves the formatting. That's as the simply put thing yep. to say. 
uh, previously to using this, we would copy and paste everything, which was terrible. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> so, you know, it's a free plugin, and so, like, I'm not going to, uh, you know, hold any feet to any fires uh, for, you know, offering us some free stuff that adds value to our business. No one, else, no one else I can find is doing this. So it's really cool if you want to export your blog post to a Word file yeah. for any reason. <laughs> You know, it's there for you. We have reasons. And, you know, yeah. it stopped working, but then it works again. So there's that to be said. Yep. That's At true. least as far as many times as it stopped working. Yeah, it cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Time to peace out. But last thing, um, the thing that I will say is that if there's something we haven't covered here or something that isn't clear, I'm telling you, if you just if you just Google it and, you know, if you just follow instructions, you know, I don't, I, I downloaded a custom theme and all I did was follow some instructions to install it into WordPress. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Yeah. Just Google it, follow instructions. If you that's, believe, you can work. That's true. It's Cheers. You, oh, wow, I love that. All right. Well, join us next week. Um, probably be Eric instead of Angela next to us, but, or next to me, but like, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. All right. Bye. Bye.